All right, there you go. Go right ahead. All right, well, grace and peace, Pastor. Grace and peace to all our Zion family and your families. I pray all is well with you. It's an awesome uh, privilege to be back on the prayer line. I welcome you to Tuesday night's Developing Unwavering Faith, not just to the family, uh, Zion family and the pastor, but also all the guests who may be on the line this evening. And I pray that you had a wonderful and blessed day. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to John 15, verse 7. John chapter 15, verse number 7. And if you can, we start the reading of God's word. And it reads, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done Unto you, my brothers and family and friends, this evening for developing unwavering faith, I'd like to talk about you too are responsible to know the word of God and apply it. You too are responsible to know the word of God and apply it. And I say that because. It's not just for the pastors. It's just not for the ministers. It's not just for the deacons. You too are responsible to know the word of God and apply it. Uh, I have said many things in these past few months about what it takes to develop under uh, unwavering faith. And as a refresher, to develop unwavering faith, first of all, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I say that from Romans 10, 17, because you're going to hear something I said before. But as a refresher, as to remind you and all of us to develop unwavering faith after salvation, the first thing you need to do is establish your own relationship with the Lord. After salvation, after you come to know the knowledge of Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you then need to establish a relationship, your own personal relationship with the Lord, and you'll see why I'm saying that as we go on. You then need to learn how to live and walk by faith mm -hmm, in God. Your faith is between you and God, and it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say about it or what they say or believe. It's all about what you believe. It all, it's all about what you say. Why? Because it's between you and God. God will answer your prayer based on what you believe and say. Again, not what anyone else says and believe. What are you believing God for? He's going to answer it based on you and your faith in him. It's why? Because it's between you and God. I said that a few weeks ago. You must not, here we go, base your faith on what God will or will not do for you on other people's experiences. It's an individual walk. Yes, we're all in this together. Yes, we pray for one another. Yes, we stand in agreement with one another. But my brothers and sisters, fine friends, when you go to God for something, ain't no, most likely ain't nobody else around. It's between you and God to believe what God can do for you personally. And it doesn't matter what somebody else has to say about what you're believing for. Amen? Uh, you must, my brothers and sisters, fine friends, preferably you are through this teaching of developing unwavering faith. This is the whole purpose of me doing what I'm doing is to develop a faith attitude. Yep, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 30 days or 31 days out of the month and 365 days out of the year, you are having a faith attitude every second of the day. Does that mean you're not gonna have any challenges? No, that's why you need to have faith attitude because you're gonna face some challenges. I didn't mean to say all that. And then last but not, last but not least, as I'm just giving you a preview or, or a refresher about what we ought to be doing, as you're developing unwavering faith and all the things I just told you just now, you're also going to have to do what? Tune out the naysayers. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to tune out the naysayers. Okay, my brothers and family friends, you too are responsible to know the word of God and apply it for yourself. If you're going to develop unwavering 
wavering faith. You can't always rely on the pastor. You can't always rely on the minister. You can't always rely on the deacon's knowledge of the word. We all have to go to the word of God for ourselves and study it for ourselves and get the knowledge we need to know so that we can develop our own personal relationship with the Lord and our own personal walk with the Lord and develop our own unwavering faith in him. As Christians, mm -hmm, I believe, I believe in all who are on the prayer line as far as the family of Zion, and I pray all the guests who are on the line are saved and know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Do you realize you are just as responsible as the pastor and ministers and deacons to read, to study, and know the word of God for yourself? I can't stress that enough. You too must be must abide in the Lord and his word. If ye abide in me, God says, Jesus says, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. I'm going to say it this way. If ye abide in me, Jesus is speaking, and my words abide in you, you shall develop unwavering faith. Why? Because you're abiding in him, and his word is abiding in you. Now, with all that said, I have a question for you. Now, this is going to sound similar to the message I did on uh, 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 having faith, having confidence in your own prayers. But I'm really focusing on the fact that you need to get into God's word for yourself. Whenever you have a problem or whenever you are not feeling well or whenever a crisis rises in your life, do you immediately call the pastor? Now, when I say the pastor, I'm not just talking about our pastor. I'm talking about for all pastors, for all ministers, and for all deacons, and for your favorite person who think you think you get a prayer through. Whenever a crisis arises in your life, do you always have to call the pastor? Do you immediately have to call the pastor or someone else you have confidence in who maybe can get a prayer through, who you feel knows the word? If so, let me ask you another question. If you're always relying on the pastor or your favorite person who knows the word uh, or, or, or your favorite prayer warrior for you, what are you going to do when that person or pastor or whoever you're relying on is on vacation or is not around or, or worse yet, are in the hospital themselves? Who are you going to rely on? Who are you going to call? Guess what? You're not going to be able to. You're going to have to know the word of God for yourself. Amen? Let me say this now. This is not going to go over well. I'm warning you now. This, what I'm about to say, is not going to go over well. Here we go. Ready? My ministry is to teach other believers. Oh, here we go. Help me, Lord. How to be self-sufficient in Christ. Now, what do I what do I mean by that? What do I mean by self? sufficient. And I don't mean that you don't need nobody else. I don't mean that. What I mean is you are to have such a relationship with the Lord that you're able to get a prayer through, talk to him about your situation and see the situation turn around in your own life, all because you had a conversation with him, all because you went to the word for yourself and found out what it meant. And then you can get a prayer through while having to call somebody else to pray with you just in case somebody else ain't around. You know, at two or three o'clock in the morning, more likely nobody else is around. You better know what to say. You better know how to pray to God. You better know the word. And the only way you're going to need to do that is you're going to have to get the word for yourself. Amen. You can't always rely on somebody else to get you through. You're going to have to have that relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Get into the word for yourself and quote some scriptures to the devil. Uh huh. And just know that the Lord is going to see you through just because between you and him. You and him, because you know his word. All right, so are you with me there? It's important that we know the word of God for ourselves. I asked you uh, this question because I have noticed, my brother, sister, family, friends, that too many people are relying on the pastors. I'm not, I'm, I say I say it that way because I don't want you to think I'm just saying our pastor. I'm talking about pastors in general, ministers, deacons, wh wh whoever else is in the word, evangelists, whatever. That's, I've noticed too many people who are constantly relying on people who are in the ministry, who are authority as far as ministry is concerned. Of course, they know the word. We have to know the word because we're delivering it unto you. However, I can't stress enough. It's highly important for you to develop unwavering faith in God to establish your own faith in what the Lord can do for you in order for you to have confidence in what the Lord can do for you. Be bold, be assured that God's got this. You got to get into the word of God for yourself. 
And I'm going to say this as kindly as I can. And stop relying on the information that you're getting from the pastor, that you're getting from another minister, that you're getting from another deacon, that you're getting from the TV folks. If you know the word of God for yourself, you know what's right and what's wrong. But if you're always taking what other people say, how do you know if it's right or wrong? You're running with it, and yet you don't know because you're basing your information on what you heard and not what you studied for yourself. Can I get an amen out there, somebody? Amen. I know I can't hear you, but I hear you anyway. Okay, so you can't always be pulling on other people. you got to get in the Word. If you're going to develop your own unwavering faith, and not just unwavering faith to be having unwavering faith, but unwavering faith in the Lord about what he can do for you, you're going to have to get in the Word for yourself and not just haphazardly. Really get in there. Really study it. Memorize scripture. Study it. Apply it. Oh, I have so much to say here. And, and though we all should be able to go to the pastor mm -hmm, for prayer and for counseling, that's perfectly all right. Especially when you are dealing with some serious issues in our lives. Uh -huh. We also must be able to go to God's word for our selves and see our prayers answered and not have to always go to the pastor or call your favorite deacon or your deacon who's assigned to you mm -hmm, or some other minister. Listen, I, I'm going to back up again. It's okay to do that. That's what we're here for, to encourage, to uplift, to strengthen others. However, not always. Amen? There ought to be a time when we say, you know, I can handle this myself because I know what the Word of God says. I can speak to that double myself and get a prayer to and see my situation change because i got a personal relationship with the Lord also. And I'm in the Word for myself. So most of the time when you call for the pastor or call for the deacon or call for the minister, it's to what? To support you, to, to back you up, to, to, to uh, agree with you in prayer. That's good. But to always have to rely on those who you feel are in ministry because we're always in the Word. That's not good. You need to know the word for yourself. And let me calm down here. Let me calm down here. And, and you need to know the word of God for yourself so you can see the answer to your prayers, all because you went to God for yourself. Now, this, my brothers and my friends, what I just said to you about going to the minister's pastor is expected for the babe in Christ. We expect them to go to the pastor. We expect them to go to the ministers. We expect them to go to the deacons. We expect them to go to whoever they feel knows the word of God because they're babes in Christ and they're still learning. However, if you've been following Christ for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years, you are supposed to be by this time a mature Christian. And no, when I say record mature Christian, I'm not saying you know everything. Listen, <laughs> I don't know everything. Amen. I don't know all of the word, but I do know how to get the devil off my back because of what the word I do know. Amen. I know how to get a prayer through. Amen. And that's what I'm trying to say. That fact, that's what the pastor's job is to do, right? Is to what? Minister to you, build you up so that you can what? Function for yourself in your own lives. Amen. Why? Because the pastor is not going to always be around. Uh, uh, uh. So if you're following the Lord for 10, 20, 30 years, you're supposed to be a, a mature Christian by this time, uh, one who knows God's word, believe it, and, and get an answer for yourself. You should not, I said I'm not I'm sorry, redundant, you should not always go, be going to the pastor for every little issue in your life. Instead, you need to go to God's word, read it, study it for yourself. Hosea 4, 6 says, and this, this so much applies to us, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of what, Hosea? The lack of God's word. Everything that we're dealing with in our lives that can be handled by the word of God, you're not going to be able to see yourself get through it. And the very, there's, the, the, there's a very word of God in the word of God that can help you, guide you, lead you, and direct you. But you're, 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 you're frustrated, you're despair, you're depressed, you, 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 you get shaky in the mind, you, you're about to have a, a conniption, all because you didn't know that what you're dealing with, you can find it in the word of God. No, not exactly in detail, but there's some word in there that can guide you, lead you, and through you, and get your strength up and get your faith up, let you know that everything is going to be all right. Well, my brothers and sisters, friends, he, he, Isaiah 4, 6 says, we are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, we, you, wouldn't be destroyed if you, we, 
got into the word of God for ourselves, for yourself, and got some knowledge, mm -hmm. Bible knowledge, instead of always calling the pastor or your favorite person. If you would just go to God's word for yourself, take, off, take, take your word of God off the coffee table, dust it off, and read it for yourself, and you will find the same answers to your little issues that you want the pastor or the minister or the deacon to find for you. Family, friends, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you're walking, talking, and living your life as a Christian should, and I believe you are, you have the same power and authority. Talking about Jesus, you know, all this power in the name of Jesus, talking about it last week. You said you have the same power and authority over the devil as the pastor does, as your favorite minister does, as the deacon does. You, if you would just get into God's word and read it for yourself. The pastor, though he or she has been called to minister, minister to God's people, doesn't have any more power over the devil and the issues and crisis that arises in your life than you do. Hmm. It only appears that he or she does have more power, authority, and anointing because he or she is what? You know it is constantly studying it's con and uh, applies God's word for themselves. Listen, pastor, myself, whoever, is not in the word just so we can teach you. We're in the word for ourselves. And based on when we get in the word for ourselves, we're like, oh, I can share it with somebody else. However, I can't do what I'm doing right now. Pastor can't preach on Sunday what he, what he does on Sunday if he don't know the word, if he ain't studying the word. None of this stuff happens to us by osmosis. No, we study. We get into there. Why? Because we want to know God's word, not just for you, but for ourselves also. We got to live like you got to live. We go through the same trials and tribulations you go through. Amen? Just because we're ministers don't make us any special. Trust me, we got battles. Hello? We got battles that we got to deal with. And what do we do? We go to work. Who do we go to? Uh, or better yet, who does the pastor go to? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. He, he goes to God. That's who he goes to, amen? Not saying that he doesn't call somebody up and, and, and talk to a fellow minister or something. Anyway, and what I'm trying to convey here, my brother and sister, is that you can and should be doing the same thing for yourself and for the lives of your family. Mm -mm -mm. You need to be able to witness to your family and all those around you. You too should be abiding in the word, reading it, studying it, believing it, and applying it. Now, in addition to all I have said thus far, you also need to know the word of God for yourself, for, you, for your very mindset. Uh -huh. Now, now I'm, I'm treading on pastor's message on Easter when he said, read the word, read your Bible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give Pastor a little credit from this little section I'm about to go into. For your very mindset, you need to get into the Word of God for your mental health. Amen. Ain't that what he said on Sunday? Mm -hmm. On Easter Sunday, knowing the Word of God for yourself by way of reading it, studying it, memorizing it, meditating on it, will help strengthen your faith, will help develop your unwavering faith and keep you from doubting, keep you from wavering and caving in and quitting and giving up too soon when things don't seem to be coming or has or happening as fast as you expect it to happen. And it will keep your mind in perfect peace instead of being in what? Torment. Also, whatever the issues are that appear or seem to be impossible in your life, here we go. Whatever issues you're dealing with right now that appear I stand, I strongly say appear to be impossible in your life can and will become possible because the word of God will strengthen your faith for you to believe and have confidence in the impossible to become possible, which in turn makes a way for your healing, your deliverance, your miracle, and whatever else you are believing God for to come to pass. But you, but we are going to have to stop being lazy, and I say that nicely, and get into God's word for ourselves, and then apply it and act on it. And you too will see the answers to your prayers for yourself without, without, uh, I have to try to say this nicely, pestering <laughs> or always knocking on pastor's door or calling him up and wearing him or her out. 
what you know of God's word and what you don't know. Here we go. What you know of God's word and what you don't know of God's word, you and you only are responsible for. And one day, you, we, me, will give an account to God for what you know and what you don't know. And what did you do or did not do with his word? Hmm. Something to think about. I'm wrapping up. My brothers and sisters, my friends, when it comes to the word of God, you get out of what you put into. You get out of what you put into. No deposit, no return. You don't, if you don't get anything, if you don't uh, get into the word, you will get nothing out of it. And it will not what? Produce anything in your life, especially not your faith. Your faith won't grow. In order for you to develop unwavering faith, you got to get into the word of God. Amen. Matthew 28 and Mark 16. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature is not just for the pastor. It's not just for the ministers or, or for the deacons. We are all to be witnesses to the world, but you can't be a witness unless you know some word. Notice I said some word, because guess what? We only know some word. We don't know all the word. We know some word, but we know enough to be an effective witness to whoever is asking us for a fear that lies within us, within what? Meekness and fear. My testimony is that I got into the word for myself way before I became a minister. Minister, almost 10 years before I became a minister, 20 years after I got saved. For the first nine years, I wasn't doing anything. All I knew was you gotta get saved. <laughs> and then, you know, one day I decided to witness and, and somebody told me, I never heard that before. I said, it's in your Bible. What Bible? I'm like, uh-oh. And, and, and so I'm like, okay. And, and so I'm trying to witness because I knew that's what we're supposed to do. I didn't know how to go about doing it, but I just wanted to witness. And when people start telling me that they didn't believe this, we don't have this Bible. And I, don't, I said, oh my gosh, I, I got family in that boot, in that kind of condition. The Lord says, see, see, I need you to preach the word for your family and for your friends. Mm -hmm. In order for you to develop your unwavering faith in God, you got to get into the word and practice it and apply it. I'm going to leave you with this. Well, before I leave you with this, one more thing. The reason, another reason why I got into word because I got tired of a Jehovah Witness trying to be more wordy than me. He would tell me the word of God. He could tell me where it was, what it said, even though what he said wasn't true. But it was, it did say what it said, but that's not what it meant. But yet he was always telling me to go home, look up a particular scripture, and show sure enough, there it was. However, I know, you know, where they think they would turn the scripture upside and down, all kind of backwards and weird. But I said, you know what, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that's the last time that I'm going to be confronted and not know the word of God for myself. So what did I do? I went out and got me a Bible verse memorization kit mm -hmm, for four different for, for four different um, uh, translations and studied it. And I, I just fed on the word and fed on the word. And all of a sudden, faith came in. Somebody gave me some tapes on faith. And oh, my God, I couldn't get enough. And then. All of a sudden, the Lord says, this is what I want you to teach your family. This is what I want to teach you to teach whoever you come in contact with. And that was that was eight or nine years before I even became a minister. I was, I, I, real quick, I'm almost done. This is my 28th year in being in ministry. Not being a minister, but being in ministry. Meaning, I, I'm celebrating 28 years. I know, you, I know you're supposed to wait till you're 30 to celebrate, but... I don't know if I'm going to make it to 30. I'm believing I will, but, I, you know, I'm celebrating 30 years of what I'm doing every day. I started back in March 1994, writing letters to whoever I want to send them to by mail. 100, 200. I was mailing those things out, talking about faith. Then all of a sudden, Facebook came on, came on the scene, and then I noticed I could do it on Facebook, and everybody can get it. And then in 2000. And so since 2014, I've been writing every single day about what the Lord has placed in my heart, not just faith, but all kinds of messages every single day since 2014. And all of a sudden, COVID hit. And, you know, we, we think COVID is a, yes, COVID is a nuisance, but there's some blessings in COVID. Look at us. We're on this prayer line. Mm -hmm. Look at us. We're on virtual. Look at us. Virtual will never go away now. Whether you're in church or not in church, we'll always have virtual. Why? Because of COVID, amen? And because of COVID, what happened? Pastor side, he wanted to have videos, uh, a live live uh, prayer line and, and asked the ministers to share. And, and, and when he asked, I'm like, oh man, 
I never did a video before, even though people kept telling me, you need to go on video. So I practiced the night before. And then I got this big response on Facebook Live. I'm like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And guess what? I've been not bragging, just giving Lord praise about what happens when you get in the word of God for yourself. I've been doing a video every single day since pastor put me on back in March, 2020. Every day, there's a video of me on Facebook or YouTube, whether I'm on vacation, whether it's the weekend, whether it's the holiday, you will find a message on YouTube and on Facebook. Why? Because I love the word of God that much. And I know I wanted to witness. And that's how I got into ministry. But that happened in 1994. I didn't get licensed to preach until 1998. What I'm saying is, you got to love the word of God so much for yourself and get it for yourself to see life change. And oh my God, I just thank the Lord for what he has done for me being obedient to his word. I just could not get enough. And my brothers and sisters, friends, all that I know, I still can't get enough. Mm -mm -mm. And then what happens? Here I am on the prayer line, being blessed, you know, pastor uh, having confidence in me to do this. Every, and I look forward to it every single Tuesday. Do I get tired of it? Nope. Because I know that through the Lord's help, what I got to say is going to touch and bless somebody. Somebody, I praise, life is being changed. Somebody is learning to walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody is developing a faith attitude. And I'll leave you with this. First Timothy 4, 13 to 6. This is uh, 4, 13 to 16. Paul is speaking to Timothy, and I'm going to use Paul's word, and I'm going to speak to you, from me to you. Till Jesus comes, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that's in you. My brothers and family friends, all of us have a gift. We all have a gift that we need to operate, that we need to use for God's service which was given to you by prophecy with the laying of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Meditate on the word of God. Give yourself entirely to them. Constantly get in there and read the word for yourself that your progress may be evident to all. And last but not least, verse 16, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine or to the word of God. Continue in it, in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those hear you. My brothers and family friends, you too are responsible to know God's word and apply it for yourselves. Let us pray. Our Father God, thank you for this time. I, I thank you for this word. I pray that what I've said about, about us getting into the word for ourselves and applying it has blessed, has touched, has encouraged those who have heard it, and that it gives them a, a, an excitement to want to get in the word for themselves and learn all that it is you have to for us to know that we, that we may grow thereby, that their faith will start being developed, that they develop a, a faith attitude. That was the whole purpose of this developing unwavering faith Tuesday night sessions. I ask you guide us, lead us, and direct us. Give us a new, a fine excitement for your word. Again, thank you for this time. I thank you for allowing me to do this. I ask you to continue to touch the pastor and his family. I ask you to continue to touch Amelia, uh, pastor's daughter who's on her way to California. I pray she's getting there safe and sound. And uh, she had it, she got off okay. I pray all those in the sound of my voice, Zion family, and, and the guests are online. You know what they stand in need of? Message you meet and supply every single one of their needs. And by faith, Lord, by faith, we, we claim it done is already done in Jesus' name. We give your name all the honor and glory and praise for it. Again, we thank you and praise you for this prayer line. Thank you and praise you for what you've done all these uh, what, two, two, two years now of being on this COVID, how you kept us, how you blessed us, and how you've opened opp opportunities for all of us to stay together and to minister and to do ministry and all kinds. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. We give your name, all the honor, glory and praise for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Zion. Once again, amen. God bless you. All right, Brother Dixon. God bless you. God bless everyone on the prayer line. Tomorrow Go morning, Dr. Reverend Dr. Dixon. Dixon. Uh, Dr. Dr. Wonderful. Morning, so come and join us at 8 a.m. to get your day started with Dr. J. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning. God bless you. Everybody have a blessed night, Reverend Dickens. Oh, bless you. All right, there, Brother Jacob. I see you over there. I see you. Yeah. I see you, Doctor. <laughs> All right. God bless. Oh, that's not, Doctor. That's Gabrielle. Good night. Thank you. Where's the Florence? That's Gabrielle. Yeah, yeah. I talked to Minister before tonight, this evening, and she wanted you to say a quick prayer for her for her procedure tomorrow. To Minister Sakura. Sakura Ward? Yeah.
Okay, yeah, let's pray then. Father, in the name of <laughs> Jesus, we come in before you, thanking you, Lord, yes. for the, the community of saints that are here tonight uh, on this line. And Lord, every one of them is extending their faith right now for Minister Ward, uh, praying, Lord, for this procedure, that there will be total victory, Lord, mm -hmm. that you will use the doctors as instruments of your healing power to yes, bless Lord. her, Lord, and bring total health to her. Bless yes, her now, Lord. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, All right. God bless. Have a good night. Of course, Gabrielle's been treating me like a senior citizen. I can't find my car. Well, well. It's the car, taking it to work. Taking it to, Gabrielle is a senior citizen herself. Then, Y'all <laughs> <You're> only <laughs> prevagen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good night. Good night, everyone. God bless you. Um, did our so our meet is on the road now?